Lisa, on our call, you spoke very plainly about the differences that exist in the literary arts field, mm -hmm. especially as it compares to the performing arts, for example. Right. And in particular, along these lines of institutions and the needs that writers have uh, that, that differ. Perhaps you can unpack this for us and share your thoughts on, on this distinction and what thoughts you might have in terms of addressing some of these challenges. Sure, I mean, just to even react a little bit to what everyone was saying, I haven't made an institution. I haven't created my own organization. I took over something that was 70 years old and that was like one of the largest English language prizes in the world. You know, you comp with the Booker, you comp with the Nobel, you comp with the Pulitzer Prize. Um, and so when you look at something that, that, that's that strong, right, something that's had that many years, you've all heard of the National Book Award, I would assume. When you look at the, when I inherited the organization, we were a $1.1 .1 million annual budget. And that's one of the four biggest English language prizes in the world. And that says a whole lot about how underdeveloped literary, not literacy organizations, literary organizations, organizations invested in the practice and development of the art form, the sharing of the art form, um, not necessarily like a social and community like a library would serve. Libraries are hugely important, so don't get me wrong. Um, but it's really underdeveloped. Our institutions don't look like Steppenwolf Theater Company in Chicago, right? This is a regional theater that's been around for probably 35 years, I wanna say. I used to work there. Um, when I was there in 2001, it had a $10 million annual budget. This is a small theater company on North Avenue in Halstead in Chicago. You know, you look at, you know, many different dance companies, many different classical, you know, museums, you name it. Um, these are all art forms that we value quite a lot. But unfortunately, at least in the sort of philanthropic, um, you know, in the individual donation format, in all of these different ways that arts thrive because they are not always sustained by the marketplace, what almost everyone is saying is that we don't value literature. Almost no one is saying we value literature. And I think that that is um, not necessarily what we say in our homes or when we go into a bookstore. So you also have all of these foundations that are doing work supporting um, artists who need to go to residencies, supporting the creation of the work. But what about the dissemination of the work? What about the fact that literature is not valued in American culture? Right? What do you do if you don't have a way to market the work? And the publishers are only gonna market towards sales. So I think a lot about these issues of sort of how we need to develop value, you know, when I go in and do a youth program in Chicago with a bunch of young people living in public housing and we give out a ton of books, right, that's one form, you know, but we also have to really think about how to create value along every single portion of the ways that we intersect and engage with literature. And, you know, it's hard to make that case, it's hard to have that conversation, I think, Insti for all of us, all of the institutions that are literary. Um, because you're also conflating with the libraries. You're conflating with people who are making sure that kids know how to read at grade level by the third grade so that they can be successful people. You know, you're conflating also with a lot of artists who are like, we need time and space and that's the most important thing. But you can give an artist all the time and all the space and all the residencies that they can have and if you can't sell the book, if no one cares, what's the point? 